On December 9th, we filed our opening brief in the Supreme Court of Virginia in the case of SOSBI versus Franklin County School Board. The case is on behalf of two second-generation homeschoolers who are taking a stand for homeschool freedom after being threatened by their local school board. Here's their story. We were given such a gift in being homeschooled and we, we loved it so much and we were able to get such a good education that we didn't want to take it for granted and let that slide so that our kids didn't have the same opportunities. We wanted to make sure that someday if our kids want to homeschool that they have the same opportunity to do that. I was homeschooled all the way through. My dad was in the Air Force, so we traveled around a lot and we didn't have to change schools every couple years. And it worked really well. And we, I think, enjoyed the time we got to spend together and then the flexibility. I was homeschooled here in Franklin County. In seventh grade, my mom decided to keep me home so we could do things we never had time to do, field trips that we couldn't take during the school year. I loved it. I loved being homeschooled. To homeschool your own kids and why. I feel like we always just kind of assumed we would. I mean, do you remember there ever really being a conversation? I think we both had good experiences being homeschooled ourselves. And then when they were starting to get school age, we just thought we should try it and see how it goes. We really enjoy being home together and being able to be a part of real life. My kids get to spend time with their grandparents and go help my dad on the farm. And, you know, it's not so centered on them. It's helping them kind of look outside themselves and see, you know, here's all this beautiful knowledge you can take part in and, and learn from and grow in that's outside of you. And here are all these people and the freedom and the time to serve them. and to learn to use your life and your skills for other people. And that's one of my favorite things about homeschooling. When Liam was old enough to start homeschooling him, we made sure to submit the information that the state law requires. And then we get a notification back from the school board saying, well, there's some other things you need to supply too. As an attorney, I'm interested in the rule of law and you know, you comply with the law and then you're good to go. And school boards don't get to just add whatever different requirements they want depending on what district you're in. When it got to the point where they said, we're going to hold you in violation of truancy laws if you don't submit this paperwork, that was when it was kind of surprising. I was very happy and excited that we had Peter on our case. I knew him from college and knew how good he was at moot court and knew those skills would transfer well into the legal practice. We knew and trusted him and knew he would work hard and do a very good job. So I felt um, very good about our chances knowing we had Peter. Yes, he was very excited, <laughs> very excited. <laughs> On one hand, it's a little bit odd that there's still, you have to stand up and fight for, for homeschooling rights or freedoms because it's so prevalent now and becoming more and more common. But a lot of that is the work that the generations before us did in you know establishing the rights and winning the freedoms to homeschool. Like many freedoms, if you don't keep fighting for it and standing up for it, you're just gonna lose it. We are so inspired by the second generation of homeschoolers like Kurt, Kristen, and Peter who are standing up for the freedom to homeschool. Would you consider showing your support by making a donation today to the Homeschool Freedom Fund?